but there's absolutely no denying that natural baits in your mix or on the end of your hook can get you extra bites, but none more so than this time of year. As the leaves start to fall, as the water starts to cool down, putting natural baits into your mix or indeed on your hook can get you extra bites when maybe you are struggling. Now, over the past few years, it seems that natural bait fishing has also become a lot more popular. I fished with maggots for years and years and years, but to make my hook bait stand out from the rest, I found a way of attaching a couple of worms as well, just to sort of spice it up, a little bit of a cocktail mix, like what the old bream boys used to do. You know, they used to have a little bit of plastic corn or a little bit of sweet corn with a couple of worms on top, and they always used to swear by it. And since I've added a couple of worms onto my traditional Illusion D-Rig maggot cluster, it has definitely helped me put more fish on the bank when I've been struggling. So I've got my tackle box in front of me now and I'm just going to run you through exactly how I attach my worms and my maggots to this micro hook ring swivel on the back of the D-Rig. So I've got my favoured pop-ups. Now I would always favour pop-ups over foam when I can get away with it and the pure reasoning behind this is is because the pop-ups will hold a lot more smell than what maybe a piece of foam or a piece of plastic will do. But I'm not going to be fishing these whole, I'm going to be chopping one down in half so it gives me a nice flat surface to tie down onto and I'll tell you another little tip about this when I've tied the rig as well so I'm going to trim him down in half like so hopefully I do a nice neat job of it take my needle and I'm going to pierce it from the flat side through to the rounded side like so hopefully the needle doesn't go through my finger so that's now on there and I'm going to pull myself a nice long piece of bait floss. So you're going to be tying a few knots in this and the last thing that you want to be doing is when the worms and maggots are wriggling around is not being able to grab hold of the ends and securely fix them in place. So that goes through the eye of the swivel like so. And then I'm going to attach my half a pop-up on there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the swivel into the bait, just like that. And then what I'm going to do before I put any maggots and worms onto a needle, I'm going to tie a double overhand knot, just so I've got a nice knot to pull down onto. And that is the first part done. Grab myself a needle from my nice little sewing kit that I've got. Make sure I can get one out of a nice, nice wide hole at the top so I can get my bait floss through. And I'm going to start with just four maggots. Now these maggots have seen better days, but when they're going to be drowned in the lake, they're going to die when they go out there anyway. So I'm going to put four of these on the needle, like so. Two. Three. Four. So we've got four maggots on. Now it's become apparent why I've only put four on in a minute. I'm going to delve into my little white bag of goodies down here, which is a bag of worms, and I'm going to put two on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a little shake because what that does is it sort of makes it a little bit docile. And then I'm just going to do a series of concertinas through the worm, back out, back through the worm, out, back through the worm. That's one on there. Now I'm going to grab another one. Get a bit of the mud out of the way on my fingers. Like so. Give him a shake. Take a bit of beans out of him. Pierce it with the needle and again repeat the same process. Three and then once more four. Like so. Now worms are a lot softer skinned than what maggots are which is why I've put four at the start and I'm also going to finish with four or five as well. So when you're pulling your knot down, you're not directly pulling your knot tight on the worms because what can happen is if you pull the knot down tight on the worms with the bait floss is you can split the worm skin when you cast out, all of your worms fall off and they land about six foot out from the bank. So there we go. So I'm going to put four or five little maggots on like so. And then that is like so. So you've got four maggots, your worms, and that a bit like a combination kebab, but for carp.
Then I'm going to take the end of my bait floss, a little bit fiddly this, poke the end of the bait floss through, and then I'm simply going to pull the point of the needle, slide all of these off, and they're going to go down like so. And then all I'm going to do then is make four or five overhand knots. You don't need to tie it off mega tight the first one, that's the first one down. Second one down. Third, nice and tight so that's not going anywhere. And then I'm simply going to snip off that like so. Got one little rogue bit of worm sticking out there. <coughs> and there we go. And that is the maggot and worm combination. Now, like I said before, the reason why I prefer to use half a boilie, this is a pop-up, as opposed to a piece of foam. And this may sound mad, but believe me, I fish this rig a lot and it definitely, definitely helps. When you reel this back through the water, if you miss the clip or you want to do a recast, you imagine as that's coming through the water, the surface area of that pop-up is almost displacing the water behind it. And what that does is it means that the maggots and the worms aren't getting ripped off. So you can get quite a few casts out of one bunch before you have to change it. Whereas if you're using a piece of foam, they can come in, they can be very streamlined and sometimes they can be ripped off. So there you go. That is my modified maggot and worm D-rig presentation. And one last thing as well, if you are fishing a lake with a lot of silver fish present, if you are fishing a method like this, just make sure you regularly rechuck because you never know, you might cast out and within minutes they might be taken off. But believe me, by fishing a combination like that, there is bites to be had and you'll definitely put extra carp on the bank.